Hello to all my friends out there on YouTube. I hope studying is going really well for you. Today's video is going to be the start of a series I'm going to do on 300 dental anatomy facts that if you know, you can ace this part of the boards. So these are 300 tried and tested true topics that are going to come up guaranteed. So if you know this stuff, you're going to be in good shape for the dental anatomy section of the boards. This is meant as kind of like a revision, you know, after you've been through everything, you've studied. Uh, so we'll start on the primary dentition with number one. The primary teeth are less mineralized than permanent teeth, and as a consequence, they're going to be more worn. Number two, the difference in space from primary to permanent dentition is two to four millimeters. That's going to be in the arch, arch length. And mammalons that typically remain beyond the age of 10 generally indicate an open bite. So if you look at this picture, these are the mammalons here. Generally, the teeth are kind of occluding together, you know, when they protrude and when they go into lateral excursions. Uh, they grind together and these mammalons will get ground off, but if you still have them, it must mean that you have an open bite, so they're not able to occlude. The calcification of the primary roots is normally completed by the age of three to four. This is going to be a pattern here that we're going to look at for eruption. Okay, The usual pattern of eruption for primary teeth is going to be as a general rule, centrals, laterals, first molars, canines, and then second molars. And then here are two general rules. Definitely got to remember this. Okay, so as a general rule, we're going to have front to back except canine. And then lowers before uppers except laterals. And so if you come look at this picture here, um, this these boxes on the bottom represent the mandibular teeth and on the upper are the maxillary teeth. And so if you take a look here, we've got the lowers before uppers, you know, that's the general rule. And then if we come over here, you see the laterals come in first and on the upper. And so that's the exception right there, lowers before uppers except the laterals. All right, the primate space develops. Uh, so here we got to know the primate space. That's like a, that's a gimme question on the boards. Do you know that? So the primate space develops in the maxillary primary dentition between the lateral and the canine. So here we go. You can see that right there. And then on the mandibular, you just go one back. It's going to be between the canine and the first molar. So this is meant to be a picture looking at the side of the teeth. And this is the central incisor. So up here between the lateral incisor and the canine, and then between the canine and the molar on the bottom. The primary spacing for the anterior teeth is most frequently caused by the growth of the dental arches. So if we go back here, you know, the dental arch is growing and you're going to traditionally see some spacing in the primary dentition. The direction of the primary enamel rods in the cervical third is in an occlusal direction. And that can be kind of a tough concept to visualize. I kind of tried to draw it. Uh, it's a very ghetto drawing here, but I hope you can kind of get an idea of what I was trying to portray. So these lines represent the enamel rods. And I only drew a couple of them, but you can imagine kind of filling in the gaps. There's going to be enamel rods going in this direction. So this is a deciduous tooth. And remember, we're looking at the cervical third of the tooth. So down here near the root, the cervical third, these enamel rods are going to point towards an occlusal direction. And permanent dentition, it's the opposite. So here we've got the enamel rods still going in an occlusal direction on the top, but then when you get down to the cervical third, they go down um, in the opposite direction. 
So the direction of primary enamel rods in the cervical third is going to be in the occlusal direction for primary teeth. Primary molars differ from permanent molars in that their roots are more divergent and a primary molar lacks an identifiable root trunk. So here we've got highly divergent roots. The root trunk is that portion of the tooth from the CEJ down to the furcation. You know, we've got one here, but like this says, it might be small or absent. So in primary teeth, this root trunk is going to be uh, much smaller than in the permanent dentition. Okay, on to the central incisors. The primary mandibular central incisor has the smallest facial-lingual crown dimension. The primary and permanent mandibular central incisor is the most bilaterally symmetrical tooth. I put the wrong tooth on here, actually. This should, this, um, should be the mandibular central incisor. So make sure that you take note of that mandibular central incisor. And you guys all knew that anyway, right? That's, you know, the tooth that is obviously symmetrical. Okay, in delayed resorption of primary incisors, the permanent incisors usually erupt lingually. And so this is where you get the shark teeth coming in. So here we've got the primary teeth in this picture, and then back here you've got the centrals erupting in. And they're, but in this, this is talking about delayed resorption, and delayed resorption of primary incisors. Because ideally you'd want the teeth to erupt kind of on top of the primaries and they resorb the roots and the tooth would fall out. In this case it's erupted lingually due to delayed resorption of the primary incisor roots. Okay, the primary central incisor exhibits a prominent cervical ridge both on the facial and lingual. So if you come here and take a look, we've got the facial and the lingual and just juts out right there. Pretty nice looking cervical ridge there. The buckle and lingual. The canine. Okay, from a facial view, the crown of the primary canine has a mesio incisal slope longer than the disto incisal, or you can say the mesial cusp ridge. So the mesial cusp ridge is going to be longer, and that's because of point 17, that's because the primary canine cusp tip is offset to the distal. Okay, on to the maxillary first molars. The maxillary first primary primary molar has a crown that somewhat resembles a permanent premolar. And so in this picture here, we've got the primary tooth and it kind of resembles a premolar if you imagine that you knocked off this part of it right here. So if you look at the tooth kind of encircled in this area, it looks a lot like a premolar. And then the maxillary first primary molar has roots that resemble a typical permanent maxillary molar. So here are the roots. We've got the big palatal root there. And here you can see a good view of how divergent primary roots are. Maxillary first molar. The cervical ridge is most prominent for the primary maxillary teeth on the mesiofacial surface of the first molar. So notice I put pay attention because they could ask this question in a couple ways. They like to ask about prominent cervical ridges. And so we already saw a question or a comment about the, the maxillary first, maxillary central having uh, a very bulbous facial and buccal cervical ridge. Um, now here they could ask which maxillary tooth has the largest cervical ridge? Where is the cervical ridge located on the teeth? tooth, you know, like the distal, the mesial. If they ask about the maxillary 
primary tooth, it's going to be the first molar, and that's going to be on the mesiofacial. If they ask overall which primary tooth overall has the largest cervical ridge, um, it's not going to be this one, and we'll see that one later on. Just a reminder here, we've got a root trunk that may be absent or very small. The maxillary second molar. So basically all of these questions are trying to get at the fact that the anatomy resembles that of a maxillary first molar in the permanent dentition. So the primary maxillary second molar is the only primary tooth that has an oblique ridge. So here we've got the oblique ridge. The primary second molar is the only primary posterior teeth to have an oblique and transverse ridge along with a distolingual groove. And then the primary second molar generally exhibits a cusp of carabelli. So when you're taking the boards, if you see any question that's asking um, about a primary tooth that has these anatomical features of you know, the ob oblique ridge or anything that you see on the permanent maxillary first molar, it's going to be the second molar, maxillary second molar in the primary dentition. But, so this tooth is the last primary tooth to erupt in um, the pri primary dentition. So here we go, just a reminder, centrals, laterals, first molars, canines, second molars. And do you guys remember the two kind of generalizations that we're remembering about er the eruption sequence? So if you don't, just kind of rewind the video and refresh your memory on that. The primary second molar exhibits more cusps than the primary first molar. Okay, now we're going to the mandibular first molar. So the primary tooth that has the most distinctly prominent facial cervical ridge is the mandibular first molar. So here we go. Bam! Look at that thing. Look at that. So if they ask about which primary tooth has the most prominent cervical ridge, you're going to choose mandibular first molar. And then this is kind of a, this is kind of a tricky question here. Facial view from a facial view of the primary mandibular first molar, the CEJ is most apically positioned to the mesial one third. So take a look here. Here's the CEJ definitely is dipping down here in the mesial one third, and that's because it has such a prominent cervical ridge. Okay, so if we look from the occlusal, they can ask a couple questions about this tooth. The primary mandibular first molar usually exhibits a distal triangular fossa. So if you look at right here, and then just a note, the central fossa is usually displaced to the distal. Sometimes you might see this being called a distal or a main fossa rather than a central fossa. And this tooth has the most distinct transverse ridge of the rest of the primary teeth. Okay, so the primary first mandibular molar does not look like any other permanent teeth. I mean, that question comes up all the time. Just got to know that. Just got to memorize that. This tooth doesn't look like any of the others. Whereas, you know, the upper second looks a lot like a permanent first molar. And then, you know, we were talking about the lower tooth that looked a lot like a premolar. Well, this one doesn't look like anything that we see in the permanent dentition. And then the primary tooth that differs most from the permanent teeth is going to be the mandibular first molar. The highest and sharpest cusp on a primary mandibular first molar is the mesiolingual. So right there, don't get confused and pick the mesiobuccal. It's going to be mesiolingual. Okay, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, if Don't forget to like the video. Um, leave your comments down below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, good luck studying, everybody. Keep up the good work.